let's head into our MTI recap. Um, MTI, which is the Maryland Tech Invitational, took place on June 29th and 30th at the John Hopkins Applied Physics Lab in Maryland. Um, 34 of the top teams around the world came to compete for the Stanley Black & Decker Cup. Uh, one of the key differences between MTI and FTC is the snake draft, um, and it definitely affected play in MTI. All three elimination rounds went to three matches, um, and many credit this to the snake draft. Do you think that having a snake draft would be something that FTC could benefit from? I think it definitely makes like eliminations more balanced. Like you see, like the four alliances mm -hmm. that were on at MTI, like a lot of them are pretty strong. Like the one seed, like in traditional, like how FTC picks, like the one seed is usually overkill. But this time, like all four seeds, like had a great chance of winning. Yeah, I agreed. And, and just the fact that all three elimination rounds went to three matches, I think that kind of proves the point that um, that like this makes then this makes elimination rounds a lot more balanced and a lot more exciting to watch. Oh yeah, for yeah, sure. I, I think go for uh, that the. Uh... Uh, uh, yeah, as Parv said, all of the alliances really had a chance. That's that's what was most interesting. It's not like in um, like in traditional FTC events where you'd clearly see the one seed having a large advantage as having the probably the second best team there or the best partner of choice just destroying everyone. You see that all the elimination rounds went to three matches, and then that uh, it was way more fair. I think so. It's definitely something that FTC could balance from or, or could learn from. I think so. So one of the things that people are saying is um, that the snake draft could hurt people that earn the number one seed. Like getting the number one seed can be very difficult at events and adding a snake draft could discount them getting the number one seed. What do you guys think about this point? But I think that even though it would sort of make it a little less fair for the number one team, it would make it more fair. It would make it a little bit more fair for like the... Um, for the other three alliance alliances. Yeah, it'll definitely make uh, eliminations more interesting. But I don't think it really discounts the first alliance that or first alliance that much because they get the first pick still overall. They get to pick whoever they want, their best partner if they want, or maybe they can pick defensively. Either way, I think they still do have the advantage by picking first. But it does balance it out. I can see that point there. Yeah, like the first yeah. seed should be favored in like all the like in their matches, like the first and the third match, like whatever the ones that they play with, with their first pick. So like it should not like hurt them like in an ideal situation. But I think it creates more of a show because you've got a lot closer matches. Um, and yeah, you're likely going to lose the second match as the first seed because you have to play that third robot in there. But um, also, it just creates that third match, and it makes you be perfect. So you have to play your best game every single match, otherwise you're not going to advance. Yeah, that's true. It does add a matter of consistency more to the table, where all the robots have to be way more consistent for the first place alliance rather than before, where they could just um, play their first, second pick. That would be more strong than, a, a tradition, with, than it is with a snake draft. So. Mm -hmm. Any, what other changes would you guys make to alliance selection if you could change it? Besides the snake draft, I mean, is there any other way to make it more balanced, or do you think that it doesn't need balancing? What if there would be, like, four teams per alliance? And yeah, so then on. you would have to play all four teams within two matches, or...? Yeah. And that way you'd have more teams in yeah, the elimination matches, and it'd give more, like, even young rookie teams like sort of a chance to compete at higher levels yeah and you get the experience of just competing in eliminations is something else entirely which many right. teams could benefit from mm -hmm. and i could totally see that happening at like a world championship level where you have 80 teams per division oh yeah and then at a state championship you keep it down to three like you've been doing in the past um, yeah and, that would and not only cool. not only that but also the first place lines would then be completely have another advantage because they get to pick two in a row after the uh, it comes back around for them. Right. So they, it would give the advantage back to the first place alliance uh, if we were to have four teams per alliance, which is something yeah. else uh, to worry about if we were to do that. So those are really really cool points. Um, I think I had not thought about those um, before. Um, anything else on alliance selection? Um, otherwise, we'll start talking about the robot action. You all good? All right. So if we look at the robot game at MTI, it was very, very competitive. Um, I mean, these teams were all the top teams in the world. Um, Gluten-free, the giant diencephalic brainstem robotics team, and 
out of the box won the competition with Mechanical Paradox Cube, Frogbots, and Saber Robotics being finalists. Let's see what Glutenfree had to say in an interview right after they won the match. All right, hi guys, I'm Ishan from FTC Live, and we're here with our winners, 1115 Gluten Free from Hollis, New Hampshire, and they just won the MTI Invitational with the Stanley Cup, I guess, or the Salem. All right, hi guys, I'm Ishan from FTC Live, and we're here with our winners, 1115 Gluten Free from Hollis, New Hampshire, and they just won the MTI Invitational with the Stanley Cup, I guess, or the Salem Black and Decker Cup. Um, so what did you guys do coming into this event to get ready and be set to win? I mean, we didn't really prepare too much. Uh, nothing was changed mechanically since Worlds. Uh, we did a bit of software preparation. Um, we tuned up auto a little bit, but it's not majorly different. So mostly just ran the robot a couple times, made sure everything was still working. So what was your strategy going into line selection? There were, I mean, incredible teams here, and you obviously picked the right ones because you're here with this cup, but what was your strategy? What were you thinking when you were going into it? So there were two options. There was choose brainstem if we wanted to be offensive. They were, one, they were pretty much the best offense spot for Depot. Um, we decided to go the more offensive route with choosing brainstem because we're just a more offensive t personality in general. So we wanted to go for higher scores instead of taking out our uh, best opponent, which would be the defense uh, strategy. And yeah, I think it worked. So you guys got pushed to three matches in both your semifinal and finals. What was your strategy going into that third match to make sure that you were going to be succeeding? Um, so one of the things you'll notice it was the defensive auto. That's been there. That's actually been there for a while. I'm actually surprised they weren't catching on to that because we've ran out a bit. I mean, it's hard. There's a lot of teams and to watch all of them. But basically, we set how many trips um, an autonomous will do. Only if it's right, then we'll go park and uh, block the parking zone, which is completely legal. It's just, um, it also, I mean, it's, it looks almost like a nasty play, but it actually present, prevents damage because otherwise we would be collecting more and colliding with them, and that would be a big problem. So it's actually a safer route for us, and it's a nice added bonus of blocking them. Cool, very, very cool. I'm really impressed by you guys, and I'm sure everybody else is. Thank you very much. Congratulations, and we'll see you soon. So what did you guys think of the finals? I mean, we saw Gluten Free just now. They had a lot of different strategies. Uh, what strategies came out that you guys weren't expecting? We talked about the Gluten Free defensive auto. Do we want to start talking about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah I, think, I think that's a good topic to start on for sure. I mean, like, they, it really was unexpected. We, we had seen them run their defensive auto uh, maybe one or two times during qualifications. But throughout all of Elimination's, all five matches that they run, all of them were cycle focused. But even, to run, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, even in past matches throughout the eliminations and beforehand, we saw some strong defensive play from other teams going on. And I think that might have impacted some of their de decision in deciding to go with some of a defensive auto. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially after um, not running it all the time, they could definitely surprise their opponents. Does they definitely did with them. Um, uh, mechanical paradox causing the robot not to park and incidentally also causing them to have a stuck and stop but that's uh that was it was a very successful defensive auto and especially in the finals i mean those 10 points yeah. can make the biggest difference so oh yeah it was it was risky but it, it definitely paid off it was definitely a good move by the team so um during the competition they had match observers and i was actually one of them i saw gluten free run this defensive auto one or two times during the qualification matches. Um, I think they were just testing it out and seeing whether they could get there early and they were just timing themselves. Um, but I find it interesting that, like Peter said, teams just didn't expect this coming. I heard the, in the pits some teams were thinking about it, but I think that uh, a lot of teams just weren't planning for a defensive auto because they thought that it was illegal. Um, but Gluten Free made a very legal one. Um, and I know some of the other top teams, like ourselves included, we had one going into Worlds just in case we needed to pull it out. Uh, we never had to, but a lot of teams discounted how much defense you could play in this game mm -hmm. legally, um, which is one of the pitfalls of this game, in my opinion. Yeah, I think this game is a little bit, it was a little bit unique in the sense that 
um, the teams, like both alliances, you could like sort of um, combat each other in terms of defense during the match itself. Uh, this is co a lot different compared to last year where you sort of had to stay in your own area uh, and it was a little bit harder to play defense. But this year, especially especially at MTI, we saw a lot of strong defensive plays. Um, yeah. I think it was especially shocking from a team like Gluten Free to run the defensive auto because we have all seen their auto do like four oh, yeah. cycles or three cycles. So it's really unexpected of them to uh, risk not doing those cycles just to uh, play defense under the team. But it worked out perfectly. Yeah, and when they played that defensive auto, it not only caused Mechanical Paradox to get stuck and stop, which is, first of all, going to cause them to not be able to um, run for the first 15 seconds during Tully Up. Um, but it also caused them to knock off their sampling field, which was probably oh, yeah, unexpected. Yeah. But that swing is 35 points that Mechanical Paradox lost because of that defensive auto, plus the time that they lost during the Tully Operated period. So I think it not only it paid off, like it would have easily made up four cycles um, of 10 points, but it would have also... Um, it also caused them to lose time during Teleop. Mm -hmm. um, there was other defense played during the finals. Uh, Landros, probably one of the more controversial defenses being played <laughs> during oh, the yeah. entire competition. Um, if you looked at them, they were clearly running into frog bots um, during the match, and they were trying to ram into them and stop them from working. Um, from what I could see, their lift or their extension was down so they couldn't intake minerals and from what i could see it looked like it was legal defense because they didn't get up any penalties what did you guys think about this defense yeah i thought it was like one of the best like defense like ever like played in an ftc match like it was like really it was perfectly legal it was really effective and like while it was like while it seemed controversial during the match like doing like a rewatch of the match showed that like th their defense is pretty much uh legal with the ftc oh, yeah. rules so Honestly, when I was watching it in person, it, it just looked like it was going to be total like penalty full match. But it was, I mean, it was surprisingly well played by Jack. Yeah, yeah. I think it was Go really, ahead. really well played defense, especially since we saw after the match, Quantum was almost able to outcycle both teams on the other opposing alliance because of his defense being played. And that's really just another sign of how well it was done at that point. So, yeah, all of his, like, defense, like, was also, like, well-timed. Like, he'd ever hit, like, frog bots, like, whenever they were scoring, because that would be a major penalty. And, like, he did that. He executed that really nicely. Mm -hmm. So, Tyler, if you could pull up that match, I think it was semifinal um, to match three. I think one of the things that was cool about it was also how well he was able to adapt and um, playing that defense. Because as soon as he saw that his slides were broken, uh, I think it's going to pull up right here. As soon as he sees his slides break, um, which is in this next cycle or two, um, he just switches over to that defense really quickly. And that's one of the things that we haven't really seen in FTC. In FTC, most of the times when a robot stops working, um, they just panic and drive yeah. teams panic and they don't do anything about it. And so um, the way that he was able to adapt and um, run really well i thought it was it was a pretty cool um testament to how well he can drive a couple of people are saying that they think it's a semi-final match one so we're going to throw that up oh. and see if it's on there mm -hmm. and um i forgot what i was going to say oh yeah, yeah so he's been doing this pretty much all season two which is like we saw him at pennsylvania states when he when his slides also broke in i think his first match there he also played some effective defense there, which allowed his partners to outcycle the opposing alliance and get him the win and eventually allow him to be the alliance captain at Pennsylvania, which is just another uh, sign of his uh, amazing driving. So right. there's where his slides break. Um, he s spent 10 seconds maybe checking out his slides, seeing what was wrong with them, and now he goes back into that legal defense, which is exactly what mess up frog bots i know that their drivers look a little bit shaky with that defense but they're able to still score just at a slower pace so i think that um frog bots did a good job coping with it but jack did show how you can play good legal defense um, oh, yeah. i know the crowd there was a lot of booing um <laughs> but i think that one of the things that ftc that could make it more exciting because a lot of it's about 
getting people involved in STEM and making it look fun is defense. People want to see things that run into each other at top speed and <laughs> could break. I mean, that's the entire point of BattleBots, and a lot of people just like watching that sort of stuff. So um, it's yeah. something that could be used in the future, I think. It's also one of the major things that sort of distinguish FRC and FTC. And I think adding that that defensive feature that was sort of pretty uh, prevailing this year, um, especially in, in that match that we just saw, um, it sort of adds another element of excitement that makes it a lot more fun to watch. I just want to point out something. We're going to uh, bring up, if you want to talk about defense uh, and FRC, I mean, if you'll see on the screen here, this is a prime example of what you can do in FRC. It's pretty cool. If you look in the lower left-hand side of the screen, uh, 1073 is a team that literally made their name on defense this year. They won a division because of defense, and they shut down, if you know FRC well enough, they shut down both OP Robotics and Symbotics this year uh, on by playing just some stellar defense. And you'll see it, at some point uh, they actually push 1114 around. Now, I'm not sure, guys, what you think. Like, Will that ever be possible in FTC? Is there enough uh, just torque in order to push other robots around, really? I mean, unless, unless they're using like Omni Wheels or something like that? Or what does kind of the future of defense potentially look like? So... I think we saw a little bit of pushing around with um, uh, Land Bros sort of shoving frog pots around. But I think that to get it, it'll never get to the point of FRC unless we increase the bot size and everything like that and make the motors and, you know, get a lot higher torque motors and bigger motors and everything like that. But at the point that FTC is at right now, I don't think that there'll be defense like this going on. I actually have to disagree. I think that a lot of teams go with mechanics because that's like the golden standard for FTC drivetrains. And if you throw a six-wheel drive against a mechanum, there's no way that mechanum's not sliding around the field in an FTC field, even with the motors that we have. So, I mean, there's definitely possibilities for defense like this. Um, one of the biggest limitations that I see is bumpers. Uh, the bumpers right. really protect the bots in FRC. In FTC, we just don't have anything like that yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this and could add an that, entirely yeah. new category, which is like how strong your robot can withstand these hits from the opposing alliance. That could be an entirely different uh, matter or subject for the judges to look at, is how well your robot's built, how tough it is against these opponent robots. Right. And yeah, I think yeah. like another... Sorry, keep going. I, yeah, I think if like the rules are like tweaked a little bit, I think defense can be like definitely more prominent in FTC. Like there were teams like team like a team that made Ford Field recharge screen. Like they had a tank drive and they were really effective at pushing other teams. So I think like if the rules are changed so that defense can be more allowed and like more legal and like autonomous, also the teleoperative period, I think it can definitely be like a more prominent and maybe even as prominent as FRC. So there was one other team that I thought played stellar defense. Uh, Tyler, I have it in the show doc, but. The team Informal Logic from Pennsylvania, um, they had very, very strategic defense, um, especially in the qualification matches when I was watching them. Um, I got to watch almost every single match, and watching them play their defense, where they're able to get right in front of the other robot that wants to intake, and they're not blocking. So if you saw that motion that they just did, they weren't blocking um, that red robot from getting in... Uh, getting into the crater, but here they're going to do it again. They're technically playing legal defense there. They're making the other robot go around, and it's not very physical, but it's very, very strategic defense that I thought needed to be um, shown here. Oh, yeah. And it's something that, you know, they, they're they playing their own game, and they're also scoring while also having that subtle defense where they're, you know, sort of lowering the other teams, the other alliances' cycles. Yeah, uh, for sure. Like, we've been playing against them, I think, all season. We played them at Pennsylvania States, and we played them at Worlds, and then we played them at MTI again. And every single time we have played them, we know how well they do play defense, how effective they are, and how they do also avoid penalties. So every time we do play them, we know to watch out for that type of stuff. Yeah, I think a lot of defense can also just be played by positioning. So, like, if, if you just change your position on the field, you can play some effective defense. Like, you don't always have to push... I think that's how Informal Logic was able to play some effective defense. They could just position themselves in the right spot, and then that would slow down the other team while also not slowing them down as much. So. All right, Asha, you want to move us into the next part? Sure thing, Ishan. Uh, MTI also treats companies that sponsor the event a little bit differently. They had boots for their sponsors, including GoBuilda, that brought a drivable couch. And they had an intern program for companies to interview high school seniors for potential internships. Is this something that should happen more at FTC events? 
I think it definitely should be like you can definitely like people in FTC they have like a lot of great skills they can I think if companies come to these events like they can people can connect more to these companies try to get internships and jobs which first is actually preparing them to do for the future right did any of you guys participate in the internship program just wondering no I didn't I didn't okay I know Peter from gluten free participated in it and a couple of others it was fairly small this year but i think that there's a lot of potential in something like this i think mm -hmm. it's a selling factor for mti people will want to go to mti not just because of the robots but also because of these opportunities what do you guys think about that yeah totally i think that having uh, people like uh job interviewers and everything coming down to first competitions uh and really seeing it in action is a lot different than you know hearing about it over an essay or something like that Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I agree with um, chat. Give Go Build a booth at Worlds. Um, their booth was awesome, and we've actually got an interview with Go Build a. So if you guys, uh, we got an interview behind the bots with Go Build a. So Tyler, if you could play that now, that would be awesome. Hey guys, uh, my name is Ashray here with Fun FTC Live, and today we are here with Go Builda. Yeah. So Go Builda has released a huge new, uh, a lot of new parts, and they want to showcase it all at the Maryland Tech Invitational where we are today. So why don't you talk a little bit about some of the new parts that are released and what's so cool about them? Well, one of the parts that a lot of people have been asking about and wanting us to release are our new mechanum wheels or mechanum wheels i should say and so we launched these actually this is the first showing public showing of these wheels and so they're all ball bearing mechanum wheels um obviously you have the go build a pattern in the center they're offset so you can actually flip them around and and put various hubs in them any of the go build a hubs hyper hubs sonic hubs as well as it's super easy to bolt any kind of sprockets and or pulleys to them and the cool thing is is you can dead axle them as well so by simply just putting in a 12 mil bearing on either side you're ready to rock and roll so very very easy to use and super smooth mm -hmm. so and then of course you know we have our new strafer chassis that of course has the go cannons i should say as a lot of people are starting to name them but uh has all of the uh the uh mechanum wheels on it actually i've got it this is the bottom side actually and so you can see the gear train in it but this is a new chassis that uh will be ready to rock and roll and it works extremely well super lightweight it weighs i think right around a little over 10 pounds maybe 10 10 11 pounds but um, easy, super easy to build and a great way for teams to get started, especially rookie teams, especially learning how to drive mechanical wheels. So, um, and of course we have new shafting as well. So many of you guys already know about some of our Rex shaft. We call it Rex because it's you know, fitting around round bearing, but you've got 12 mil, we've got brand new eight mil Rex. So it's seven mil flat to flat, eight mil round, fits in all of our eight mil bearings. And of course we have brand new, not released yet, but new Sonic hubs that actually fit on our 8 mil Rex, and they're going to be offered for obviously 6D as well. So the neat thing about these, instead of an M3 screw on the end, they're actually an M4. So you can really crank down on them and, and not worry about any kind of slip, things like that. So, um, of course, we have some new slides as well, some new concepts to show. So you've got slide system here everybody's looking for super smooth slides and especially really stout strong slides so you've got a concept right here but as well as one of the cool things too what you can do with this and i think i've got it right here this is a concept that actually uses a screw drive in order to power the rest of the system so you can see here as i rotate this out or you can see as i rotate this it spins the bottom the linear drive inside so that's one way you can actually use open go rail in a really cool you can make this just wicked fast, really, really fast. So we've got that as well as our linear kits too. You can see you can run this one as well. And the tube will actually unscrew. So those situations where you need a lot of power pushing or and or pulling, you've got a system like this too. So, and of course belts, servo power gearboxes, which are um, legal as well. Use a new 788 servo, and so you can get a ton of power, 3,000 inch ounces of torque, um, and of course a hollow shaft, and you know it will mount into any of the Go Build a channel, so you can mount in any direction. For those of you, you know, lifting large arms or a lot of lot of weight, relatively fast. Um, obviously, you're trading speed for power when you got to have it in setups like this. So works extremely well, and of course our metal 
servo gearbox, or excuse me, our, our uh, servo blocks, and so we actually offer these and go build up. And our new servos, which a lot of people have been, you know, all of the uh, dual mode servos out there, or the one servos that can be run two different ways, they all have brass gears, but we came out with steel gears, and so these are available now. We increase the power ever so slightly, but they run extremely smooth, and of course, you don't have any more issues with braking gears like in the brass gears, or the, the brass set. So, so that's kind of, we've done a lot of other stuff, or some, a lot of new parts that we're coming out with that aren't here. Um, got a lot of different drivetrains we're kind of working on too. Um, so you can see how smooth this system is right here. Obviously all gear. We're coming out with systems that will allow you to do a center drop in channel. So you're going to be seeing those come out too very soon. So there's a lot of new parts we're going to be dropping here in the next couple months. So be be on the lookout and be, make sure you get on GoBuilder.com to uh, get on our mailing list or email list. So, All right, guys. You heard it from the man himself. Uh, GoBuilder is going all at it uh, for FTC. So go build or go home, right? Uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, we look forward to having you next time and enjoy the rest of MTI. Very good. Take care, guys. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.